Few things are more captivating than the great beyond, the final frontier, the universe. Of the countless myriads of spiraling galaxies, radiant nebulae, clusters of stars, the universe can truly be called infinite beauty. But how do we observe its extraordinary phenomenon in such detail? What allows us such precision so far away? These questions give rise to the importance and influence of the Hubble Space Telescope. In recent astronomy, nothing has been more influential and divulging than Hubble. Its unique position is unobstructed by atmospheric distortion, providing us with nothing less than an absolutely stellar perspective of our universe. It has revolutionized space exploration, creating answers to questions and questions to answers, and paving the way to more unprecedented discoveries. It's there and it's pervasive throughout every area of astronomy, whether it's nearby with solar system things or the most distant galaxies and cosmology. Any field of area of astronomy you want to look at, it really, uh, it, if not dominates like it used to, is, is there in the forefront. But where did Hubble come from? How is this magnificent instrument visualized? The answers trace back as far as 90 years ago, when the German scientist Hermann Oberth first proposed the idea of an extraterrestrial observatory in his publication of The Rocket into Interplanetary Space. Oberth explained that a rocket could achieve the necessary velocity to break past Earth's gravitational pull and possibly the atmosphere. This position would allow an image unimpeded by atmospheric turbulence, resulting in a resolution 50 times clearer than that of ground-based observatory. I guess Oberth was the big visionary. He had the dreams and the ideas and to some degree brought it to fruition. But when we go to the Hubble Space Telescope, the key character who pushed for something like that was Lyman Spitzer, a Princeton uh, astronomer. And he realized early on, here, here, Oberth planted the seed and had some basic ideas, but Spitzer was a driving force as far as getting funding, Congress and the Senate, and uh, the budget of, the, of uh, NASA and the U.S. to be able to do that. So it was those people together, the visionaries and the first few steps, and the first uh, pathfinders, and then the people that really saw the light and wanted to, to get something like this done. Spitzer was inspired by Oberth's ideas, and in 1965, headed the National Academy of Sciences to convince the scientific community and Congress of space telescope's feasibility and advantage. Spitzer mentioned the quality of the angular resolution in space, as well as the ability to perceive unabsorbed infrared and ultraviolet light. Spitzer's persistence eventually paid off, and in 1966, the first orbiting astronomical observatory was launched. followed by three others, two of which being absolute successes. Because of this, Spitzer was able to push a more ambitious, large-scale space telescope project. And thus, in 1975, the future Hubble began developing. They decided that a high priority was to get one that would work at visible wavelengths to reduce the turbulence. And they really wanted a flexible, multi-instrument telescope with lots of capabilities and so they did it as a really big project. In general, I know that when you're designing something like a space telescope, you start with what is it we want it to be able to do what do we want to be able to learn? What information do we need to gather to get there? And then what does that give us? And so what does that mean we need to have? It was never a particularly um, amazing engineering ch challenge. It was always one of constraints of money and time. Despite these complications, NASA and various companies, contractors, and universities pushed the vision of a large space telescope forward. The Space Telescope Science Institute was established in 1981 and handled science planning and telescope time management. Lockheed Missiles and Space Company developed the protective outer shroud of the space telescope, and the European Space Agency, in order to gain telescope time, furnished the solar arrays. 
Completing Hubble was a long, strenuous process, hampered by a tight budget constraint. However, the telescope finished construction in 1985, setting a proposed launch date of 1986. Challenger disaster in 1986 can be considered a turning point, that it was one of NASA's darkest hours but introduced new and refined shuttle safety standards. It deferred launches for 32 months, keeping Hubble in storage until its launch on April 24, 1990 aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. After more than 50 years of conception, realization, toil, and finally success, Hubble ascended to its proper place among the stars. However, success was short-lived. The first images Hubble sent back were not what NASA had anticipated. Hubble's mirror was flawed. They tested the mirror, the primary mirror on its own, and they polished it to a very accurate shape, and they had made lens to mimic the rest of the optics and they had made a mistake in making their test lens. That said, it could, even in its flawed state, it could do science that could not at the time be done from Earth. NASA resolved to fix Hubble by attaching an instrument known as COSTAR. It basically put a corrective set of optics in, it's like we gave it eyeglasses. Thus, seven astronauts embarked on Hubble's first servicing mission to install CoStar and translate light onto the main mirror. Thanks to the servicing missions, it was possible to put on the glasses and get uh, night, well over 90 plus percent of what originally been hoped for by making that modification. It's my understanding NASA had never done anything that complicated that involved uh, out in space with the astronauts. You have to dock to something that's in orbit. You've got no ground to brace against. You've got no gravity. So if you try to turn something, it pushes back on you, right? Well, if the astronaut hasn't figured out how to brace to something, they go to turn a bolt and they spin the other way. Nonetheless, on January 13th, 1994, servicing mission one was declared successful, and soon NASA received images of an unparalleled caliber resolution. Years later, Hubble has peered into the past, when galaxies were collecting and the dust was settling more than 600 million years ago, and has essentially lifted the fabric of time, uncovering the universe's oldest mysteries. But now we look to the future. The importance of Hubble, of astronomy, lies in pushing boundaries, exploring, engaging, and discovering our world. Hubble can be considered as the first major step in establishing a foothold on our universe turning point in understanding the infinite. Through Hubble's discoveries and its successors, who knows what we can find? It will be remembered as the first large space telescope, but more importantly, the initiator of truly unprecedented things.